Hi there, welcome to this YouTube video. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and this is the tarot reading for the 12 astrological signs. Um, and this update is for the Pisces full moon that is taking place on the 1st or 2nd of September 2020. If you have not watched my astrology update on, on this topic, then do not miss it for it's a very thorough and detailed report of what energies you may expect or what planetary activities uh, you may encounter and how the, the dance of the planets is affecting us. I go into great uh, detail when it comes to the astrological update, I speak about the triplicity system, the exaltations, the terms, and many, many other things that you will not find anywhere else. So now without wasting any time, let's get straight to the tarot reading. I'm not going to talk much astrology this time because I've already given you a very thorough report. So straight out, we'll do the tarot reading. So before I begin, let's say divine together, divine together, energetic clearance, divine together, divine together, divine together, divine together, divine together, divine together. Okay, now uh, it's Ganesh Chaturthi, so it's a very uh, sacred time, uh, a very sacred time to initiate new things because as I said in my article on Garpati, that he is the initiatory force the bar of initiation so if there is something that you want to manifest in your life go ahead and invoke Ganpati for he has uh, the blessings to give you um, unimpeded success okay so now uh, beginning with Aries this is pretty heavy because this is happening and I'm talking about the, the moon and the sun opposition. So I'm taking them into account. And um, then I, I'll try to explain it through the houses. So this is happening in your 12th and 6th for uh, Aries. Now the 12th house is the house of dreams, is the house of ancestors, is the house of self-sabotage, the house of undoing. In Hellenistic astrology, it is called the house of evil spirits. It is where Saturn has planetary joy. Okay, so interestingly, this is also activating your sixth and twelfth house, also the house of death. So sixth house is house is where the sun is for you, Virgo. So this is the house of uh, diet, house of exercise. Uh, companion animals, you know, uh, uh, eating healthy. I think there could be some sort of crisis that is triggered because oppositions are tensions with regards to your health, with regards to, uh, you know, how you feel in your body and how you can change it. So it could also be intuitively you are guided uh, to how you may you know, work with your body because this is 12th. It's very kinetic energy. So that means it's an energy of movement. So maybe by dance, maybe by yoga, you know, you could uh, activate that sixth house sun because this is calling to um, find equilibrium with your health, with your everyday habit patterns. That is the sixth house, your everyday habit patterns. So the message from Spirit for you, Aries, is the ten, is the nine of swords. And the nine of swords is essentially about a very painful cycle ending. Now, interestingly, this moon happens to be on the 27th Manzil, which adds up to a nine. I just love number synchronicity like that. Nine of swords, and swords are always intellectual. Okay, ideas. So Aries, there is a, a very painful cycle for you that is ending. And uh, maybe, you know, you um, sort of don't know how to make sense of it as yet. You're processing a lot of things. Because don't forget in Aries, you've got Black Moon Lilith, you've got Chiron, you've got Aries. 
okay, the goddess of Discordia. So there is a lot, and Mars, of course, how can I forget? Mars going retrograde, uh, squaring all the Capricornian stellium this whole year. So 2020 is pretty much marked by this uh, Mars retrograde from now on. 9th of uh, September, Mars starts going retrograde, and this is your ruler. This is your rising ruler activating, uh, you know, a lot. And you're having a moon in the 12th house, a full moon in the 12th house. So your clarifier is Prince of Cups. So there is obviously uh, you feel a, at conflict with someone, maybe who's water sign. And I'm, I'm definitely getting that this is a relationship thing. Maybe somebody younger than you and, you know, you had a really good connection with them. And now they're suddenly... You know, they've just gone off your life and you don't know what to do. And Prince of Cups is, is just the most compassionate. It's it's very close to the Pisces energy that I was talking about. Compassion, love. But it's reverse. So whenever a card is reversed, it means the archetype is feeding off the, the, the uh, reciprocal energy. So it's, it's reversed, right? So the archetype is reversed. So essentially... There is a lack of compassion maybe that's coming from your loved one or your partner or maybe someone you connected and there has just been a cut-off situation and you feel extremely troubled, extremely worried uh, by what's going on and, and you essentially feel like there is just no way out, like you know you want to cry and if you want to cry, it's okay to cry because you're doing a lot of healing with a Black Moon Lilith and Chiron being there. Uh, Black Moon Lilith and Chiron are the archetypes of Esua and Mary Magdalene. So the message from the ancestors is have hope Aries because I know you need this card. These uh, cards don't look too good per se because you know you have this uh, really conflicted emotions that I feel at this point. So whatever it is, may you find uh, peace, Aries, may you find peace, may you find peace, so mot it be. So now moving on to Taurus. Taurus, your ruler Venus is very, very actively engaged in this lunation. She rules this lunation by term. Okay, and Venus is also exalted in Pisces. So there's a very Venusian energy that is coming forth and this is uh, literally activating your 11th and 5th house. 11th house where the moon is and 5th house where the sun is. That's Virgo. So this opposition creates tension. So 11th house is larger communities, your larger friend circle, uh, you know, groups you're a part of, your online presence, your online group, right? Uh, your community, essentially. So with that, fifth house could be a love interest and there's some sort of conflict with your love interest and your friends or a creative project and you're unable to sort of, you know, put it out there online the way you want to put it. And there is a lot of conflict that's emerging from this. Fifth house is also the house of children. It's a house where your planetary ruler Venus has a joy. So, you know, it's it's a very special energetic uh, signature, this fifth house sun right now, Taurus. Uh, interesting card, Major Arcana. Whatever's going on, it, there's a sort of an atonement energy in the air where you have to sort of, you know, uh, stand in your raw primal power for a sort of resurrection, for a sort of complete cleansing. Leave back what is not serving you. You know, and, and this being reversed tells me that there's going to be a lot of healing in, in all of this that you pursue with this judgment card. There's a lot of healing that's going to come to you. We've got the Knight of Cups. It's a clarifier. Very interesting. There is somebody you're emotionally involved in, definitely that fifth house. And you want to take it ahead. But the judgment card here tells me that there could be something that's a backlog. That's sort of not letting you, you know, 
really embrace your destiny or find uh, the love of your life and that could be you know you're going through a divorce you're going through something very traumatic now uranus in your sign is really spicing up the whole thing now interestingly you're getting very affected by this full moon because uh, luna is sextiling your uh, sign because Uranus is in it. So at about 10 degrees, Luna sextile Uranus is the only prominent aspect that I spoke about actually. So there is a lot going on that Uranus bringing in some sort of atonement energy, maybe divorce, maybe in a movement to another place, just you know breaking away from toxic uh, situations. And then finally finding the will to embrace what's coming, the will to embrace something new. The will to uh, really go on a new path of emotional fulfillment. And that's what I see for you, Taurus. Because uh, you also have that heavy stellium in the 12th in Aries with Black Moon, Lilith, Chiron and all of that. So just be careful of how you are perceived online or what you say. Because you could be misconstrued with this, you know. Uh, memory surface memories bring back memories bring back you okay uh your memories are like diamonds in the treasure chest of your spirit uh, more and more memories are rising within you remember the happier moments with your loved one who are here in spirit so 11th and 5th it could also be that you're missing someone okay yeah literally missing someone who's a very close friend and and that person is sort of you know not there in your life anymore for whatever reason and, and that really is upsetting you Taurus now uh, may you find peace may you find equilibrium uh, this Pisces full moon Pisces is a sign that's harmonious to you because your earth and Pisces is water so there is this interesting uh, you know energy of sextile that's happening Okay, now moving on to Gemini. This is activating your 10th and 4th. So the 10th house is your social recognition. And this is where the moon is. So your social recognition, how you're perceived in public, how, you know, uh, the legacy you leave behind, basically, of all the work you've done in 3D. Right, and fourth house is it's it's the crux of the natal chart. It's what holds the whole zodiacal wheel up. It's under the roots, it's under the earth. It's called in Hellenistic astrology. So it's it's hidden, it's submerged. It's the place of the unconscious, the mother. Okay, it's the crux. The fourth house, a mother, a child, and all of that. And your ruler, Mercury, happens to be in Virgo, in a good place, because, you know, Virgo is a sign that Mercury rules. And not only does Mercury rule Virgo, Mercury is exalted in Virgo. So this gives you a sort of a mental perspicacity, a sort of mental, uh, you know, clarity that you can really work with Gemini, and that could be very powerful for you right now. So let's see, and also remember, tenth house is the kind of is the work you do. So there is some kind of opposition with the work you do and your the family life, or your mother, or maybe your child. You're not not able to uh, spend enough time with your children, you know, the way you'd want to. So Gemini, the message from Spirit is Queen of Pentacles. Yes, it could be somebody who's Taurus, Virgo, or, you know, uh, Cappy in your life. I sense Taurus. But this could also be you really, you know, understanding your financial situation and getting clarity on manifestation and how to create abundance. So I see this, this Queen of Pentacles energy playing. And Queens are mature. They're in touch. They're grounded. They're earthy. Now this could also be a call to sort of you grounding your energy when it comes to investments, when it comes to, you know, seeking the correct path of career advancement. Because as of right now, we all need to restructure the way we have been working because you know coronavirus has changed the dynamics of the entire world interesting you've got the six of swords and the six of swords in the thought tarot is called signs actually to me it is strategy okay it's strategy six is the number of the goddess so there is this 
feminine energy permeating gemini you're a masculine sign you're mutable air and air is very scattery the vibe of air okay and mutable air scatters the most so i think it's it's about strategy and that strategy if you uh, strategize correctly the science behind the whole dynamics the mechanism that you want to set up to create abundance if you understand the science behind it i think you will be able to manifest something spectacular something that maybe you did not quite expect but it's just going to come to you and it's going to walk right into your life gemini a very interesting times in the message from spirit okay so i just had this card fall for you and this is light it says imagine yourself as a being composed of energy and light because in reality that's precisely what you are so again understanding yourself and and having faith in yourself to strategize correctly because if you do so that tenth and that fourth it could be also your wife who would be happy with the strategy you set up because um ultimately the realization of of your own divinity i think is going to help you ground yourself and i see with the queen of pentacles there is the necessity for grounding and that's what you're being called out for right now okay now moving on to cancer it's activating your ninth and your third house cancer so ninth house is you know uh the house of uh foreign travel the house of foreign is publishing you know any kind of legal situations higher education third house is you know vocational education primary education local neighborhoods whereas ninth house is foreign neighborhoods so you know maybe you are you are feeling a sort of you know necessity to travel um and you're unable to sort of like you know just go somewhere because your long distance travel is complicated with corona it could also be publishing something you wrote that maybe there is also it also could be some sort of conflict with your siblings and the way you uh you know even maybe at university uh conflict with sibling think of all the third house significations opposite all the ninth house significations uh Ninth house is so grand, you know. It's Jupiter's domain. Ninth house, where the sun finds planetary joy, so it's a grandiose situation. And third house, actually, in Hellenistic astrology, is where the moon finds planetary joy. So oftentimes, we have lost the signification. or uh, in interpreting the third house because we do not understand the concept of planetary joy and how uh, the moon the moon being the mother the moon being uh, something emotional something in in imaginal you know it could also be uh you know just expressing yourself artistically and then finally writing about it and and getting accepted cancer it's powerful for venus who rules this lunation by term is in your sign on the 25th degree and what do i have for you the nine of swords i did pick this for aries by the way and uh, interestingly venus in your sign is square air mars in aries So there's going to be this sort of maybe relationship discord and you feel like you know no matter how hard you try it's just lost on the people close to you it's you're not getting any validation you're not getting any understanding it seems to be a a pointless thankless situation so let's understand the clarifier for you cancer Wow, so you've got the two of cups, love, and I'm so happy for you, Cancer, because you've got that very painful cycle is ending. Now nine, this this happens to be on the twenty seventh month of the moon. Twenty seven is nine, 
So there is definitely a nine is the wrap up energy, you know, after that is 10 and 10 is, you know, the, the first uh, coupling, the first time two numbers appear. Nine is a solitary ruler. It's, it's a very divine uh, number. It can also be used for baneful magic, by the way. So uh, a relationship that has gone completely, uh, you know, Maybe you're misunderstood, maybe there's a difference, maybe there's been some sort of, you know, uh, third person into the situation. But I see all of that being solved and uh, you coming in uh, to this relationship equally, with equal footing. So even if it was not a very equal situation, equal uh, uh, friendship or relationship, it's going to get that way, okay? Now, with regards to the message from Spirit, I have for you, seek. Seek and you shall find. So it says the power of Spirit exists in all things. Everything is made of energy and every single thing in your physical world contains a fragment of Spirit. Tattvamasi, that thou art, the, the wisdom of the Upanishads. Remember that and you will be able to connect on an equal footing with the person you so desire to end the nine of swords, that anguish, the trauma that you feel, you know. So that's going to be uh, something very blissful to walk towards in your journey and I wish you all the best, Cancer. May you find peace and bliss. Now, moving on to the astrological sign of Leo. This is your eighth house and your second house. So eighth house is the house of other people's money. That's where the moon is. And second house where the sun is, is, uh, you know, your resources. So this opposition could be that, you know, borrowed money and people want it back. It's uh, the project that you took money for did not go as planned. Maybe you need to restructure the way you uh, do work with this particular thing. And also your ruler Leo is the sun. And the sun, as of this nation, has no essential dignity. And eighth house is a malefic house, okay? It is a domain, it's a realm of Scorpio, right? So it's a very Martian energy signature with the eighth house. It is a house of, uh, you know, all things hidden, like I said, debt, tax, death, sex, procreation, and all of that. Okay, uh, so a lot of all of that is going to get active and second house is income. Not just what you earn, but also the food you eat. If you look at Taurus being the second sign of the zodiac, Taurus rules food. So I know a lot of people do not like to correlate the, the zodiacal signs with the houses. But I find a beautiful synergy permeating through the signs of the houses. So... Uh, to me, the second house is, yes, about money that I earn, but it's also about the food that I eat, the sustenance that I have. It sustains me, the second house, okay? Uh, now, although planets are most powerful in an angular house, not so much in a succedent or a cadent house, but, uh, I mean, I find second house to be very powerful. In eighth house, everything is happening below the surface. Everything that is hidden is happening. Things that you cannot even imagine. Things that are deep. Symbols from the unconscious are popping up. So, you know, you if you resolve this tension of opposition, of the opposition, you could probably get a great grant that will add to your uh, bounty, that will add to your resources. It's very, very possible, Leo, with this because, you know, You've just had so much activation with the Lion's Gate and so much energy has just seeped into Leo. So all the uh, best. Now let's understand what um, gods are there for you, Leo, and uh, the messages that I have for you. So this is the reading for the astrological sign of Leo. Fifth house, uh, where Venus finds planetary joy. It's beautiful, the sign of Leo. And for you, this is the eighth and the second. So the message from Spirit, oh wow, Knight of Cups. So 
So there is somebody who's, I feel Pisces. You know, this Pisces new moon who's coming and who has this chalice. The chalice is a promise, actually. The chalice is the womb. So it could be someone who wants to marry you. It could be someone who wants to, who you have a baby with. It's very possible, okay? If, if you're a man, you could be literally meeting that person you have a baby with, okay? So it's it's really beautiful. It's, it's you want to share, you want to care, you want to, you know, be sensitive. Because uh, this is a very sensitive, the eighth house can be a very sensitive energy. So that's where Luna is, and, and you're feeling it, you know, you're feeling that. Eight has also inheritance, by the way. So there could be discrepancies with your inheritance and, you know, the way you wanted to maybe channel your money or funnel the money incorrectly or somebody saving your money, okay? So that was a, a beautiful piece of tarot. Now let's see what I have for you with regards to... Uh, the fourth tarot as clarifier Leo wow ace of cups a lot of cups is popping up this uh, water mutable water lunation so I see knight of cups and ace of cups I was talking about pregnancy I was talking about the blessing of the goddess emotional fulfillment starting a new emotional cycle for many of you Leos, finding someone very special and second house is, you know, uh, what you hold of value. So it doesn't have to be money or income. It can be something that is added on that you hold with great value. So, you know, there is that possibility and this tells me pregnancy. I, I sense pregnancy for many of my beautiful Leos out there, men and women, okay? So... That's something to keep in mind. Support. Know that you are the late house is also ancestors in a way, you know. So you are supported right now. If you feel you're not, then you're incorrect because you're very, very, very supported. Okay? Now, uh, moving on to Virgo. The moon is in Pisces in your seventh house of marriage, basically all interpersonal relationships. And uh, the sun is in your first house, vivifying you. Your ruler, Mercury, is finally in your sign, Virgo, you know, uh, inspiring you, vivifying you. And Mercury is also exalted in Virgo. And not only that, I actually love the expression of Mercury through Virgo way more than I like Mercury in Gemini. Because in Yin, uh, mutable Virgo, Mercury has just so much to do. So much to do, right? So marriages uh, can be in conflict with your own ideas and your ideology. The rising is literally a physical body. And with Mercury coming into Virgo with the sun, and you're feeling vivified, feeling uh, enlivened in a way, it's going to be a very precious time for you, Virgo. Go out there, uh, embrace what is coming, this lunation, because something very special is coming your way. This could also mean that after a conflict, uh, you get closer to your spouse you you start seeing your spouse in a new light it's very possible very very possible since this month and is pretty good for love related affairs you know for a Pisces person to have a love spell done it could be very effective right now so uh, for a Virgo person I mean because you're the Pisces is your seventh house so Virgo, let's see what I have for you. Page of Wands. Very clear with this. It's the start of an idea. It could be a text. It could be a short distance travel that you go to pitch your creative idea. It could also be your child or your brother or sister or your cousin. And um, or even a younger colleague or, or for some of you, uh, into the romance scene this could be this younger person who's like uh, you know really 
into you and wants to sort of date you, Virgo. But you're not entirely sure because, you know, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to open up with this person. I'm not entirely sure. And you've got the Ten of Wands, which is oppression, which is overburden. So Virgo, at some point, I feel like, you know, you are pushing yourself too much. And if you like, uh, there's this really oppressive energy around you where you're constantly having to work. You're constantly having to, you know, do something for people and not getting any reciprocity. I think I sense that energy coming forth for many of my Virgos where you just don't feel uh, appreciated enough. You don't feel like... You know, you are making a difference, but you are. So remember that whatever it is, if it's a younger sibling or a child, then you're definitely very stressed out with the way things are going in their life, with education, with the way they are, are reacting maybe with friends. And you're just, you know, stressed out about that. And 10 uh, is also... A binary it has an ending as well as a new beginning so there's a new beginning that's coming your way Virgo okay serenity tune into that serene part of you now for many Virgos it could be a child because of the Saturn and the heavy fifth house situation that's going on a Jupiter Saturn Pluto in that fifth house you know it's, it can be crazy so it could be uh, you know impacting a child in a sense and you feel extremely stressed out because you don't know what to do Virgo right so I hope you get to solve it I have a Virgo rising Virgo Mars Virgo Venus and uh, uh, also a Virgo Rahu and the first house so and Rahu does rule Virgo in Vedic astrology so you know that's a safer even in the side rule system I have uh, Rahu and Virgo and Ketu in uh, Pisces. So, seventh and first, yourself and, uh, you know, me versus us is in conflict, is in tension. But resolution is at hand with that Mercury moving into Virgo, your ruler going into your sign. You get this once a year. And, and your uh, new moon is also coming up, Virgo, uh, after the Pisces full moon. So it's it's really a very powerful activation of them, that is, you know, your other and you. So embrace the change that is coming, embrace it. Libra, for you this is interesting because uh, Pisces is your sixth house of health. And... Um, uh, Virgo is your 12th house where the sun is so again 6th and 12th 6th house is what you put in the mouth your physical body, your health, your everyday habit patterns 6th house is where Mars has planetary joy so it's a malefic house for sure companion animals uh, signification of 6th house so all of that is being activated, 12th house, house of death, house of mysticism, house of incarceration, house of luxury, hotels, and all of that. Uh, anything that takes you away from base 3D is the 12th house. Dreamy, dreamy. Okay, messages from spirit coming to you. Let's see now, Libra. Beautiful queen of cups immediately tells me this is a venus in cancer and your ruler is venus who's now in cancer in your 10th house actually so uh, this is quite a precious moment for you libra to to really um you know embrace who you are this could be film film opportunity for some of you or a mentor or a healer kind of person tarot reader astrologer uh, psychic kind of a person Libra who uh, shows you the way who maybe you connect with also on an emotional basis okay and who sort of becomes a, a very important part of your growth and uh, like I said for some of you this is luxury hotel so you could get that work if you applied somewhere but I don't know with corona how valid that is 
face cinema some of you suggestions is getting that dream project or you know getting your project out ace of swords is the clarifier send that text out because this is something new with regards to your intellectual uh, process there's something new if you've been stagnant it's going to be cut away in your air and you've got an ace of swords so this is definitely a new beginning uh, with love with spirituality mysticism For some of you Librans, obviously this is connecting to this venus who is uh, a water sign very empathic very compassionate very you know uh just very very affectionate as well so you know it could also be you need to send that text to this person so this person to make yourself clear that okay this is uh what's happening you know this is what's happened to make yourself clear it's very very possible that that could happen now the message from spirit is support know that your ancestors are supporting you in heaven that no matter if you think you're alone you're not really alone you're never alone uh, you're always supported you're always loved so don't forget that libra don't think of yourself to be alone just look at these two beauties and you will manifest uh, a, a phenomenal tomorrow believe me libra okay now uh, i hope that this 12th and 8th is is not a uh, 6 and 12 is not a very difficult situation for you take care of your health otherwise it could literally lead to huge problems 12th house also addictions and toxicants you know it could affect your physical body which is the sixth house exercise you do and it's time to set that intention whenever you have that new moon in the sixth house you the full moon in the sixth house hopefully you've done that intention when we have the new moon in your sixth house and now you will see the culmination with the full moon in your sixth uh, libra right and now we're moving to scorpio scorpio we have uh, the fifth house and the eleventh house activated for you so fifth house is where venus is planetary joy and 11th house is that Jupiter has planetary joy. And Venus and Jupiter are very prominent in this lunation. Scorpio, your ruler is Mars. And Mars will be retrograde all of this year. Mars is going to be retrograde. So this can bring about frustration. This can bring about problems, depression. This can bring about uh, all kinds of, you know, such Mars-related problems. Mars can be, you know, Mars cuts and burns. Mars is very dry, very hot. So, you know, when Mars is in rulership, right? Uh, when Mars is in rulership in your sixth house, so you have Mars finds planetary joy in the sixth house, actually, Scorpio. So Mars and your Aries happens to be a sixth house. So Mars in the sixth is strong in rulership in Aries, actually, like Mars more through Scorpio. But Aries is almost like just brother sign. Okay, because you are feminine, Aries is masculine, it's your brother sign, Scorpio. So having this 5th and 11th, 5th houses as of romance, children, creative ideas, creative expression, you know, just making a business out of something you love. And 11th house is larger communities, larger friend circle, online presence, uh, the internet you know so you could meet someone online and there could be a it could start off with the conflict and then things could be really beautiful with you guys or you could have a project that you put out online and and essentially once you resolve the tension of the opposition you tend to feel the the beauty of of what you have created with people start reciprocating to that right people start feeling that now your modern ruler is pluto who's in your third house of um you know siblings local neighborhood and all of that and you've got that saturn you've got that jupiter everybody in that third 
so local neighborhoods will change will flux a lot of stuff's going to happen heavy activation and remember then uh, saturn will leave forever and go into aquarius which is your fourth and that is going to shake up some serious uh, business. It's going to shake up some lot of people and get you moving towards business. Maybe that was better articulated. Now, so yeah, it could also be that your child finally wants to join some club. You go 